Paris, France. There's a reason why I've come here. I've come here to see the newest version of a car which came out in 2012. I can't believe it's 2012. Has sold over 150,000. Has won over 60 awards. It's actually the most commonly seen electric car in Europe. I'm going to see the third generation of the Renault Zoe. I'm really excited. It's a car that goes about its business quite quietly. It's been very influential for EV users and very unpretentious. Let's see if they've ruined it. Let's hope they haven't. We are promised a tech lift, a facelift, better performance and crucially, better range. Now in its third incarnation, I get the chance to pull the cloth off the new Zoe. ZE50. That means 52 kilowatt hour battery pack. And that means a WLTP range of 236 miles. So let's have a look at it in a bit more detail. Kind of looks familiar, doesn't it? And that's because this is more of a mild facelift and a big tech lift than anything else. So it's still familiarly Zoe. Very, very aerodynamic. Renault have said that they've re-sculpted this bonnet. You can probably see in this light, there's a couple of little shallow creases here and here, pushing your eyes down to this gigantic holographic, they say, logo. It's a big old diamond in here um, with chrome and uh, blue surrounds. And there's some blue throughout the car, inside and out, actually. Now in the big diamond, you've got the charging port and I press a button on the dash here. One of these toggle switches, the interior is very cool. We'll have a look at that in a minute. And you've got the, the door inside here, obviously type two and you've got CCS. You can charge up to 50 kilowatts DC, uh, seven kilowatt home wall box. The car will be fully charged in nine hours, 25. Um, but of course you can charge up to 50 kilowatts fast charge, which is big. So it's a 52 kilowatt hour battery pack, um, 236 mile range, the outgoing car, the, the, the Zoe ZE40 does a maximum of 179 miles WLTP, so 20% increase in range and also a performance increase. This is an equivalent of 136 horsepower, the 100 kilowatt front wheel drive motor. Craig Tong from the Renault Zoe Owners Club. Yeah, nice to Craig, meet you, Johnny. Thank it's good you. to see you. I know, I wanted to talk to you about this because you know more about Zoe's, way more than I do. But what do you think of the styling? I think it looks great. Really yeah. does. The, the bonnet, the changes on the bonnet and the bumper is, it, it's still got the cuteness, yeah. as people like. Yeah, I like the cuteness. But it's also got the, um, sort of like, move out of the way, I'm, I'm behind you sort of yeah. like style now. Because I always thought the Zoe, Aesthetically, was better than the Leaf. I always thought they got it right. They got it right, time. and they haven't changed too much. No, uh, as well, you no. Know, the back hasn't been changed at all, apart from the lights. Yeah, I think you're right. And, and the side silhouette looks the same to yeah. me. You, you yeah. wouldn't if it was parked next to another one, line on line. You, yeah, you wouldn't know. I really like these sort of sleeker lights. I really like the revised fog lights with the, the sort of chrome loops around it on the other model there's a couple behind us you might be able to see and we'll have another look at those because they're slightly different spec this part of the grille is chrome on that car there now from a side profile actually it's almost the same silhouette as the existing zoe so there's not a lot of difference here obviously it's five door only with the little hidden handle which is the same as it's always been the wheels are slightly revised in terms of style there's a couple of different ones to choose from those ones are a little bit more dynamic and the way they turn and they're a bit chamfered i suppose you've got the ze 50 badge over there you've got this nice kind of sculpted kind of french bottom here and the strakes in the rear lights again it's a really i think i've always thought 
Um, the Zoe is very kind of relaxing and not aggressive. A lot of cars try and look more aggressive. This isn't aggressive. It's trying to look more assertive according to Renault, um, which I don't think is any bad thing. And I've always thought it's a better looking car than the Leaf. In the boot, again, fairly flat entry point here um, for the boot. And you've got a, um, a false floor and underneath there you can put your charging cable gubbins or your reusable bags for life. That's what I tend to do because otherwise they fly everywhere. But really the most impressive parts of this car is the dashboard and the inside. And of course, I guess the tech that lurks underneath. Before I forget, it's now got rear disc brakes as standard. And the other thing that this car has is five different wheels choices uh, in 15, 16 and 17 inch sizes. So yeah, a bit more choice. Really, this is the piece de resistance. I can speak French, piece de resistance. Or is it the piston resistance? Because it's obviously all electric. Now, Renault's design language has become much, much more prominent in the last few years. The Clio is the first car to use some of this new technology. N what I, what I mean by that is not electric technology, stuff like the knurled ends of the indicator stalks, um, this, this new kind of uh, HVAC system here. So you've got two of the biggest changes here inside the third gen Zoe is this dash binnacle here. This is a 10 inch all digital. This is all augmented now and you can put the navigation on there and in the middle of that along with your speedo and your range and all the other things and that's really cool. Audi have done it for a couple of years with that eye cockpit and then you've got this a portrait style tablet. Apparently Renault have done this because I think the trend that Tesla have set seems to be moving out to all the other manufacturers. Do you like the uh, the sort of 10 inch fully digital um, you binnacle? You can see the sat nav in front of you yeah, you, know, you can. I think, I believe you can swap it all about as well. You can, so, and that is, yeah. And the which is up until now, you've seen that in much more expensive cars. Yes, you know. It's yeah, I don't even think the Nissan Leaf has. No, I don't think it does. No, it's, I don't it's think it's got, does. So it's it's quite good. And then you've got the new 9.3 inch screen, yeah. which is now portrait instead of landscape. That's right. So that's that's very pretty. And then obviously the new app that's going with this. Yeah. Where you'll be able to sit inside your house now, not only precondition your car sit there and plan your journey, yeah. send it to your car, get in your car and go. The important things while you're driving aren't necessarily in the touchscreen. You've got this little plinth here and you've got a, a few here as well, which that's your charge port, which I pressed earlier. This is the, the quick fire things like heated seat and under here, this here is a lovely digital readout inside the heaters. Um, switches and the air conditioning and the heated front and rear windows and that's the stuff you want to access without delving into a touchscreen albeit a very pretty curved one. The windscreen by the way talking of demisting is actually um, has been altered so that it's a bit more sound deadening giving the idea of a little bit more quietness in here. Have a look at this seat. Now there are three different styles available but this stuff is called recycled yarn. And this is a mixture of recycled plastic and also recycled seat belts, old seat belts. And I think it's great. You've got it on the door, the armrest here. You've got it in the middle of the dash instead of bits of wood or combed aluminium that we've had in the past. This particular model is all recycled yarn. Do you like the recycled yarn? Yes. I mean, that's, that make, um, that's gonna make it feel a lot warmer in the winter as well. Yeah, you know, yeah. It looks, it does, it looks phenomenal. And the seats feel a lot more comfortable as well. So whether well, they've changed the seats, yeah. the, the design of them. And it's still the same design, but it's the, I suppose it's the way the upholstery is all done. The padding and the, the padding, yeah. yeah. You've got this raised plinth here, the center console, which is supposed to give you a feeling of a more premium vehicle. It's kind of semi-floating. You see I've got my hand underneath it here. This horizontal piece here that's rubber, that is induction charging for a smartphone. You've got another cubby here, which is rubber lined and grippy. You've got two USBs and an aux there and a what you'd call a cigarette lighter in the olden days. The e-shifter, which is all new, like I said before, has something called B-mode, and that's specifically for urban driving. B-mode pretty much means when you're in D for drive, if you just knock it back again into B, 
when you come off the throttle you get aggressive regen. In other words it's Renault's idea of one pedal driving which was specifically tailored for urban driving. I don't normally show you uh, the notes, um, but this is interesting because it's in bold. Engineers have used the increased capacity battery of the new Zoe ZE50 to get the most out of its 100% Renault motor. It's in bold. In other words, it's definitely Renault. It's definitely not made by anybody else. It's definitely our motor. Nobody else's. Look, it's in bold. Have they kept the cooling of the battery pack the same? Yeah, so the, the battery pack is still air-cooled and uses the air conditioning uh, yeah. system to keep the battery cool. Yeah. But I did ask and they said that you can use the heater system now while charging so you can stay warm before it wouldn't let you because it was diverting everything to the... Oh, OK. So I believe that's So if you're fixed. sitting in your car in winter, yeah, as we got, sometimes do. Yeah, it, it was getting a bit chilly. <laughs> um, and they also announced it, it's actually not 50, everyone was speculating 50 kilowatts, it's actually 52. Now, it two is. kilowatts. Uh, yeah, hey, that's, that's 10 mile now. I'll take it. I'll yeah, take yeah, it. Absolutely. They've almost played it down by calling it the 50. Yeah. Haven't they? Yeah, so it's actually 52 kilowatts usable. So yeah. the pack's obviously bigger, but we don't know what size that is. Yeah. So this new R135 means you've obviously got more power, you get 0 to 62 in under 10 seconds, but you get from 80 to 110 kilometres an hour in 7.1 seconds, which is 2.2 seconds better. So better performance, better range better tech, better interior weave, but still with a, re a revised but familiar nose and bottom. It's pretty familiar Zoe in here, save for this new fabric, and the new fabric goes right up the back seats. Again, you haven't got a separate headrest, so for a tall person like me, that's okay, but it can feel a bit claustrophobic if you're smaller, because you can't see through the seats, it, it's fine for some people. You've got this map pocket actually, which is side entry, very French. I don't know if anybody uses map pockets anymore, but you can stick a couple of mags in there and uh, an iPad, an iPad. Celadon Blue, I've just remembered the name of this new color. There's three new colors. There are nine to choose from now, including a very bright red. I do think this is the best spec. Those wheels, this Celadon Blue, which is quite intense. And this interior, so you've got a half and half. You've got half recycled yarns, um, and then you've got half, I don't think it's leather, I think it's vinyl with the blue stitching. But I like the contrast of the, the textures here, and on here, and on there. That white car that I was just sat in was full recycled yarns. The one over there is full leather, which I don't think suits it. But this half and half, I think works. And then you've got the two-tone you see on the seats still being shown up quite nicely. I think that's a really, really tasteful cabin. Okay, so first gen car, real world range. First gen, real world range. In the summer, you're looking about 80 to 90 mile real world range and yeah. about about 50 to 60 in the, in the real hardcore winters. Yeah, yeah. Um, and now we have a car with a WLTP of 230 plus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 236. And, and a, a proper EV driver. You've got to be over 250. Yeah. You know, if you know how to drive a Zoe. So there you go, new Zoe. Faster, more techy, slightly better looking, but the same familiar package. They haven't said what price it's going to be, but they have kind of said that it'll be about the same as what the current Zoe is. So think of that as from £22,000 in the UK. That's not bad. The pricing of one has always been very competitive and it will come with a free wall box charger across the board. When is it going on sale? Good question. Apparently around autumn time and you'll be able to order it before then, but we don't know yet. As soon as I can drive on, I will. As usual, thank you so much for watching Fully Charged. Patreons, thank you so much for your subscriptions. Uh, without you, we couldn't make this stuff. I say it every time and it's damn true. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe. If you like this video, tell us. Thanks ever so much. Bye. I'm going to walk down a spiral staircase to Britain. I'm going to Britain. <laughs> <laughs>